Good morning on uh, this beautiful rainy morning, but uh, good morning and we say welcome and we're glad that, that we're able to worship together and we welcome those who worship with us online as well and uh, say good morning to you um, and say welcome and that we may we worship together and uh, give um, God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit all our praise and our glory. Just a few announcements before we get started today. Um, Operation Christmas Child is upon us, um, really just a few months away of packing. Our goal is 300 boxes that we'll be packing in early November, um, getting ready for that um, week, the collection week. And we will set aside a Sunday there in early November where we will pack them and have lunch and fellowship together. But we have been collecting our items for that. Um, this week, the year we're going to collect, um, we're collecting crowns for the um, month of August. As well as, uh, just a reminder that we're reading through the Bible together. You can find that on your um, weekly notes. You can find it on Facebook on Monday morning. Um, you can also find it in the Monday Messenger where we are. Um, Preschool, our Sunbeams Preschool will be having an open house um, this Wednesday. We have added an additional classroom this year. We are, the families are invited to come anytime between 2 and 6.30. We are offering some radical hospitality as they come into our building. Brandy, um, our preschool director, has designed a, um, a scavenger hunt for them to go to all the different places that they visit. They come in here for chapel on Monday mornings. They go to the fellowship hall when it's raining. Um, they go outside to the playground and we'll station ourselves around the building, welcoming these families into our congregation and uh, into our building as well. Next Sunday, um, just keep in mind, we'll be blessing of the backpacks. Um, if you are returning to school, whether you are um, in administration, whether you are going to college, um, elementary school, teach or work in a school, come um, and receive a special blessing. We have a tag for you to take with you for blessings um, this coming year. Also, mark your calendars August 28th. We will be having a lunch um, right after our service. We will be celebrating um, as we have been through this SLI process and we continue to go through it that we have been talking about these teams that we are getting up and running together of uh, being able to engage in our community, connect them to our church, to equip them in order to send them out into the world. And we will be celebrating that um, together on that day. We'll have some fun. Um, we'll have some games and prizes as well. And so mark your calendars for that. Um, just also... Um, Fifth quarters are upon us. The community center are hosting those fifth quarters. And so if you'd like to volunteer or partner with Madison at the community center in order to put that on after the football games, um, you can tell me or you can also contact Madison at the community center. But today um, we're taking a break from our sermon series because we welcome um, Claudine Le Leary to, with us today. She comes bringing greetings from the Methesco, the seminary that we support in um, Columbus. And she comes to, to bring us word, and I'll give you a little bit more of an introduction to her and her family. A little later, um, Claudine and I went to, through Crucible together and were ordained at the very same time um, with the West Ohio Conference in 2016. And so um, we bring her greetings this morning and we welcome her as she brings her word. But I'll give you a little more information about her um, when she comes to bring us the word. So may we prepare our hearts and our minds um, to worship in the presence of the living Christ.
call to worship, and you will find it on the screens. The Lord calls us today to be people of his love and mercy and grace. The Lord asks that our words of hope become actions of peace. Let our ministry together bring peace and justice. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God of mercy and love, we thank you for calling us to this place on this day. We praise you that you challenge us to show our faith in ministries of peace and of justice, offering compassion to all who are in need. Open our hearts and our minds today to hear your words of encouragement and challenge. And we offer these prayer, prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. May we sing together and lift our voices and raise them in praise as we sing, Blessed be the name of the Lord. may be seated and I invite the children to come um, for a special message. Well, good morning. How are you? Are you doing good? Well, I brought something with me today because, you know, it's summer and it's vacation time and so I brought a suitcase with me. You have a mint? Are you going to take that on vacation with you? No, you're not? Well, when we go on vacation, we have to pack, don't we? Don't we have to pack to get ready to go on vacation? Well, if I'm going to pack my suitcase, what are some things that I could put in? Oh, you'd put your jammies in it? What else would you put in there? Oh, your blankie, you'd put your blankie in there? Your blankie too, because we wouldn't want to leave home without it. And yours too, so all of your blankies would go in there. An address? You think you'd take a toothbrush with you? What else? A toothpaste too, we wouldn't want to forget that, would we? 
Oh, because babies have teeth? Okay, because they have to brush their teeth as well, don't they? So if we packed our suitcase to go on a trip to go wherever we wanted to go on vacation, but you know what? Jesus sent his disciples out. Do you know that? And do you know what he told them to take with him? With them? You have a flower shirt, don't you? You'd put that in the suitcase too. What did Jesus told his disciples? You know what? He didn't tell them to go pack a suitcase. He told them to go, and they didn't have to take anything with them. They didn't have to take, they didn't have to make the plans. They didn't have to take bread with them. They didn't have to take water with them. Because as they went out, people provided that for them because they were going out in his name. Jesus has told us to go out into the world to make disciples. That's who we are. We're to be sent out into the world to make disciples for Jesus Christ. And they did a lot of walking, didn't they, in their shoes? I know, and they did a lot of walking, didn't they? as they went out. Do you know, sometimes I think maybe we don't go out for Jesus quite as quick as we could because we think of all the things that we need to take with us or we think of all the things that we have to do or uh, that we have to be trained for in order to go out. Do you know what? Those are provided for us if we go out in Jesus' name. So let us pray. Can you repeat after me? Dear God, Thank you for being faithful. Help us to take Jesus' name to others. We love you and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, and Donna is back there ready to take you to kids' worship. One of our favorite uh, times has become our glory signings time to be able to see where God has worked in the midst of our lives during the week, um, to be able to celebrate his goodness because God is faithful to us. His goodness um, have follows us all the days of our lives. And so some of the things that we have said that where we have seen our glory sightings is that um, my son came to see me this uh, morning, which was one day this week for a surprise visit. Um, another one that I had was um, when of last week, Marley coming to take communion and running after um, communion and saying, I want more, I want more. I have reflected on that this week of saying all of our days, wouldn't it be great if we ran after Jesus going, I want more, I want more. And what we see in the eyes of a child. Um, also, um, Donna went out for Love Lipstick this week, went and prayed into a local business and um, she texted me to say she she went in and as she prayed for the person, the person at this business said, you have no idea what that prayer meant to me today um, for somebody to come and pray over me and my work. What a glorious time that is and what a wonderful um, bit that is. And it says, thank you, thank you. Um, here was another one. Um, this came as a, um, a thank you card this week. Thank you, thank you for being the hosting church and coordinating everything for VBS um, this week, this year. It was so beautiful to see so many people working together for the sake of the children, for the many behind-the-scenes details you and your staff tended to. Thank you, thank you. And we say um, what a wonderful um BBS we had and we still are just basking in God's goodness and his faithfulness in that of hosting 109 children this year. And so in all of this we give praise to God and we sing together. Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with his glory Holy is the Lord glory. 
over the past several weeks, um, we have been talking about the SLI process that we have been through and how, what our vision is to have a Jesus-filled, connected community um, where we are building disciples to be able to be sent out into the wor world, um, being able to build relationships uh, with people in order to connect them to the church, engage and connect them to the church, and to be able to equip them to be able to be sent out into the world. And each week we have talked about this discipleship process of engaging with people. Those are ministries that we create outside of the church for the purpose of engaging um, non-Christians um, and engaging people then to connect them to the church in order to equip them to be able to be sent out into the world. And that is a never-ending process of discipleship, of being able to make disciples in order to send disciples into the world, in order to make new disciples. And that process continues. And there you see the slide of how we engage with people, that we create these ministries of engagement. Um, one of them, Love Lips, it going in and praying people for praying for people connect to how we connect them to the church. These are ministries that connect them to the church. Things we did such as VBS, our coffee bar ministry. These are things that connect people to us. And today we kind of highlight equip um, where we equipped people for ministry. These are things like our Hebrews Cafe where we are equipping people with the gospel message of Jesus Christ and building them up in order to send them out. And next week we'll talk about send. I mean, Claudine is going to talk to us a little bit about sending people into the world to make disciples. And that is the process that we go through in order to live into our vision of being a Jesus-filled, connected community um, where we make passionate, and we do that by making passionate disciples um, where we together sharing the love of Jesus by engaging with people and connecting them and equipping them in order to send them out. And so I want to celebrate this process. That's what we're going to do on the 28th um, as we celebrate that, as we live into this vision of what it means to be a Jesus-filled, connected community and to say, how do we do this? And how do we all use our gifts in order to um, move through this discipleship process? And so today, as we commit that to prayer, and we can continue to commit that to prayer, um, as we go to the Lord in prayer, if you will take your weekly notes um, and see the prayer list before you, those are people who could use um, a prayer, a card, um, a word of encouragement, and we take all of this to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we come to you. For you are a God of peace. You are a God of justice, of mercy. And we give you praise, for you are our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. But we admit how easy it is for us to fall into the trap of complacency. We get so used to doing things the way that we've always done them before. We celebrate your love and rejoice in your gifts. Enable us to do ministries. Help us to flourish. Yet oftentimes we hang back. We feel that we've done enough. We think that we've met the challenge of your call to us. We say, wake us up. Shake us up. 
get us excited about all the wondrous ways in which we can serve you. Do not let our awareness of the needy of others be expressed only in our prayers of healing and compassion. Move us to action. Shape us to be people of peace, bringing the glorious news of your love to all people. Stretch us, mold us, make us truly disciples who are always ready in order to help. Create in us a new spirit, a joyful energy to serve you. And we come bringing all our boys all the excitement of seeing where you are at work in the world. We also come bringing our challenges. We come with heavy hearts for those who are sick. We ask that you bring healing, bring you pe- to bring your peace into turbulence and unrest. We give you all praise this day. And we give you thanks. And we pray all of this as you've taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and lift our voices as we sing together, Living for Jesus.
today um, Claudine is going to come and give us our God's word today but Reverend Claudine Leary she was born and she was reared in Rwanda East Central Africa um, she moved to Zimbabwe in 1997 to attend Africa University after graduation in 2001 um, having earned her bachelor's degree in business studies she moved to the United States in 2003 and enrolled, in, um, enrolled at Fairmount State University in West Virginia. Um, she earned her MBA from Fairmount in 2009. Um, Claudine earned her Master of Divinity degree from Methesco, um, which is Methodist Theological School in Ohio, in, in, down near Columbus in 2014. And she was ordained an elder in the West Ohio Annual Conference in 2016. Claudine and my paths crossed in 2014 when we were commissioned um, as provisional elders. And you go through a two-year process with the conference um, to go through a, called Crucible. And I met Claudine um, during a Crucible. I'm just a very sweet um, person full of... Um, the Holy Spirit's peace um, when she speaks and it talks to you. And I've had the privilege of knowing Claudine um, since then. Um, and we were ordained together in 2016 um, at annual conference um, that year. Claudine um, works, um, is, she's married to Alan, her husband here. He is a U.S. Navy veteran. And they have three children together, Abigail, who is tw uh, 20, um, Andra, am I pronouncing that right, who's 17, and Micah, who is 15. Um, at, do what? She what? Uh, 11. 11. I'm sorry. I, it says 115, but I, I didn't think that was right. <laughs> He's 11. No, that is fine. Um, she is the director of development um, at the Methesco, at the seminary there. Um, for many years, this church has supported the, Method the Methodist Theological School of Ohio. And she comes giving greetings and giving thanks, and, uh, but also bringing God's word. So let's welcome Claudine this morning um, as she speaks to us and brings us her, the word. Good morning, church. It's so good to be here. It's so good to be with you. I bring you greetings from Methodist Theological School in Ohio, but mostly I bring you their gratitude. Um, actually, yesterday the president, uh, Jay Randell, called me. Um, he's in Arizona. He really was the, the one supposed to come today, but he couldn't make it. So we arranged because he had that schedule and so he says, don't you forget, and don't you, you know, forget to say our gratitude. Your gift, the first gift to, came to MTSO was in June 1988. And you have been supporting the school yearly, and we cannot thank you enough. It's actually 
kind of um, like a miracle that today your focus is equip because that's what the seminary does. You know, we, you know, it's 25,000 a year and our clergy don't make a lot of money. And so you can imagine how much loans they would get at the end of their graduation. But thanks to generous people, when the school started, it was built in 1958, a lot of people have contributed regularly. And actually, as I speak, UMC students don't pay tuition these three years. Yeah, because we have discovered that it's a big burden for them. And we have intensified fundraising and also using endowment. Other students have to get a little bit of scholarship here and there and then get, you know, but UMC students who have a three GPA and up are not paying tuition in our school. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Our churches needs them, our communities needs them, and we wouldn't do without you. Would you pray with me as we start the service, the sermon? Precious God, we love you. Mostly, we thank you because you taught us to love. We still don't love as you do love, but that's our aspiration. And I invite you, God, and I thank you for your presence. I thank you for making sure that everyone in this room know that you are real. And they can set the time aside to express that, to worship you and acknowledge your presence in their lives, acknowledge your blessings. God, I pray that even as we go into break this spiritual bread, that you fill us up with your Holy Spirit. Again, thank you for your presence and thank you for your gift. In Christ's name, amen. So the sermon today, I titled it God's Eyes um, because I meditate a lot and you, I, I would fill this sermon with a lot of questions so we can reflect it together. I wonder what God sees. And I want to start even from the beginning. We know in John 3.16, it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him will never perish, but have eternal life. What did God see in this world, on this planet, that required that high level intervention? to give his only begotten son, even unto death. I want you to let it sink in. What was going on? Nothing else could do. And so Jesus came, and we read the scripture. Jesus, the first thing he did is to Select 12 disciples. And I ask myself, what did Jesus see? And the key in Jesus coming and the key in Jesus selecting is love. I, as we were driving here, I noticed a lot of lands and a farm. I grew up on a farm. My father still is a clergy, ordained in 1960, but he also maintained a large farm. Large for us, maybe not, <laughs> not here. But um, I know when you are gardening or farming, whether you have livestock or crops, you look, you walk around and you, you Look intensely on your crops in your garden. And what you see 
calls for action. Because you love your crops. You invested your time and your energy into it. You love your animals. It may be a call, a drive to the vet, but something, your affinity, your connection, your love for your farm, and when you see, you take action. And so, so with God, whatever God saw required that level of action. And so Jesus called those 12, and the scripture we are reading today is in Luke 10, verse 1 to 2. It says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. This is Jesus. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. We see what Jesus saw. It's a kind of metaphor, but it gives us a lot. What does that mean, though? Because he uses the harvest and the fields, but we're talking about people. And we know he chose the 12, but this scripture says he sent 72 others. What did Jesus see that prompted him to realize 12 disciples will not cut it, will not suffice. We read eventually in Matthew 28, uh, verse one, 16 to 20. Eventually, this, mess, this call and this assignment will come to us. And Jesus said in that scripture, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So the call from, from God first to Jesus, one, Jesus like arrives, oh, I need 12, eventually 72, eventually the whole nations. And the message I tell you is to attend to God's fields. It's to attend to people out of love. Because when that is not done, they perish. But if it's done, they have eternal life. And the scripture is full of other good things, a lot of packages that are hidden in this mission. And it centers around love. God loved the world, and he sent Christ. Christ realized, oh, this is more than I can handle alone. Chose to have chose the 72, chose each one of us for one single purpose. First, to be filled with the same love and 
to see. I was telling Lori that I'm third year in a PhD program uh, on leadership and change. And a lot of work we have been doing and researching and writing and researching and writing. It's really like you went back at the beginning. It's just reading and writing. It, it, you, I have been discovering what it, Jesus was saying when he said the, the harvest is plentiful. We are in a very unique times if we want to see that. But I want to think it's no different than what had to cost God, God's only son. And we weren't even born yet. Sometimes we think we are bad. No, you haven't seen anything. Think about something that had to cost Jesus' life. That generation must have serious challenges. We need to see with God's eyes. And then, do need assessment. When God looked and saw, God had no other way. God said, well, we need to become flesh. We are a spirit, but um, there's no other way. This race is going to, there is no future. You need to go. You need to wear their body. You need to speak their language. You need to eat with them. That first a need assessment and then intervention. And Jesus taught and taught. And he revealed, doesn't he? He said, whatever I see my father do, that's what I do. It's a huge commitment. Being a Christian is so, so big. And it's extremely critical that we apply. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because that's why I'm even here to say thank you for your application. But we can do it alone. And that's the equip part that comes in today. Who do you send? How many? One thing I've discovered um, when I met Alan, he was a missionary uh, in Zimbabwe where I was doing my undergraduate. I was actually a freshman. Um, that's what, 24 years ago. Um, and he had to come all the way and he did a lot of exemplary. He showed me example, and I have grown to see that he was serving the children, but also helping the African University, which is a United Methodist University, training their staff and to use to, to install air conditioning and work on it. Uh, and he was also um, trying to train them to harvest the solar. He's an energy engineer. And trying, you know, realizing that was way back. And but he was realizing you guys have so much energy over your heads, you know. Um, that was very good. But what I, I discovered, so we both started the nonprofit. We are all volunteers to continue to help educate children, especially those living in refugee camps. And this nonprofit is not really centered as a Christian. You know, it's just a regular 501c3. And what I want to mention about that is we allow even a non-Christian on our team, you know. I believe once we do need assessment, we can create teams that don't even belong to church. You know what I mean? And nurture them. Like when Christ say, I love what's written in Romans. He say, what we were sinners? What we were, we were yet sinners? Christ came. 
imagine how much we can accomplish if we use that kind of God's mindset, you know, where they don't belong to this sense, you know, but hey, we would go, right? We'll go recruit them, teach them, train them, and then advance the kingdom. And that's my prayer, that we embrace God's eyes for the world we are in today. We do need assessment, like he did, like Jesus did, and create the team. You know, one of the challenges Christ faced in his time is that he was hanging out with sinners. He had stepped out of the church. You know, he went even to dinner at that uh, gentleman, Zacchaeus. 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 And the people were not, the religious people were not pleased. Why? Come to us. Just work with us. Those are outside the religion. But Jesus had mission. And he had done need assessment. And he loved everyone like God loves everyone. And so he included people outside the region. And next thing you know, there are no more Jews, there are no more Gentiles. <laughs> And the message has reached us. So that's my prayer for you. In addition to the gratitude for all you do, I pray that you continue to see through God's eyes the times we are in, the needs in your life, in your household, in your community, and even in the country. And remember, God wants no one to perish. God is counting on us through his son, Jesus Christ, to find ways to create disciples outside the church, because we already are disciples, and also send them to create more. And if you want some trend, send them to Metesco or any other seminary, Asbury, where you went, or any other, and we will equip them. And that's my prayer today for you and for the church and for our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Claudine, um, for that word and for reminding us to be able to see the world through God's eyes. Um, God, for God so loved the world and that it is out of his love that he sent his son in order to sacrifice his life for us so that we may go into the world and be sent. And we give you thanks. Um, you say that we live in a very unique time. When I was in seminary, I had a professor that said, you have to understand, we are living in very unique times that echoed exactly what Claudine said, but instead of looking at it with fear, to look at it, to say we are privileged to live in those times, and God has entrusted us um, to live in those times, to be able to continue the gospel message of going into the world and making disciples. So let us stand together and sing out of our hearts. We have a story to tell to the nations. We have a story to tell to the nations that will turn our hearts to the right. A story of truth.
we receive the blessing, I'm going to ask um, Claudine and her husband Alan to go back to the back as we, um, with me as we greet you. But go from this place in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.